Greetings from Atlanta. My name is Jennifer Knox, and I am a teacher at Woodward Academy here in the state of Georgia. And joining me is... Hi, I'm Vaishnavi Viru. I also go to, or not also, but go to Woodward Academy. And I'm one of Ms. Knox's students um, for this class, Ethical Dilemmas and Decision Making is a class that I took, but I learned all of the C learning curriculum or part of it that you're about to see in this presentation. Um, and I am the third group to take it. So um, this class has been offered for three years so far, and I've been the most recent one. Wonderful. So I'm going to begin sharing my screen. And the title of this workshop today is What is in my control? Taking charge of my resilience. And what you'll be seeing is actually brought to you by a, um, a collaborative group. So Woodward Academy is the school where um, Navi and I um, are spending most of our time. And there's also a program um, called C Learning, which is out of the Center for Contemplative Science and Compassion-Based Ethics at Emory University. Um, we also are using content from the Trauma Res Resource Institute and the Community Resiliency Model um, that comes from the Trauma Resource Institute, developed by um, the co-founder, Elaine Miller Karras. Um, all of the content that you see here can be accessed and resources and curriculum can be read and used um, if you visit clearning.emory.edu. And the Trauma Resource Institute has an iChill app if anyone is interested in following up um, by looking at that. The C learning materials that you see here um, are some of the free and accessible materials for anyone around the globe. And this um, program was actually created at the request of the Dalai Lama about four years ago. And it continues to grow. There's even a um, online training course um, called C101. If there are any teachers out there or parents and caregivers, um, who are interested in that training. Um, and there are also the first two chapters of these, uh, the, the curriculum materials available on their website. This is really designed for children aged five to um, 14, but a high school curriculum is being developed right now. Um, and the middle school materials um, up to 14 can be used with them as well. So um, there are many different um, ideas that are cultivated within the C learning framework um, and curriculum, but one of them that we're going to be talking about today um, is called uh, Help Now. And these are very, very easy to use strategies, especially during um, a situation such as now with a global pandemic when stress is high and the need to reach a state of equilibrium um, and a state where we feel safe uh, is something that we all want to achieve. So I'm going to let Navi talk a little bit about um, Help Now strategies and one of the ones that she's using right now in her own life. So Help Now strategies have helped me throughout the year um, from when I first learned about them to today. Um, and they help kind of calm me down and um, help me think straight afterwards if I'm anxious about something. So in my room, I have two sticks. Um, they're called Dandia sticks and it's used for a form of Indian dance. And so it's just something that I have lying in my house. And I find that grasping these two sticks um, help me a lot and just holding them tight um, it gives me a sense of stability. 
Wonderful. Um, and when you are holding the sticks, how long do you usually work with them in order for you, you to feel like you're reaching a state of calm? I think I grasp them tightly um, for about a minute and a half. Maybe I'll loosen up um, for the next like 45 seconds. And once I'm a little more calm, I start twirling them. Um, so I think the whole like calming down thing happens in about three minutes. Hmm. That's great. So one of the things about help now, now strategies is that anybody of any age can engage in them. In fact, many children teach their family members to do this. Um, but the point of these strategies is for us to be able to stay in what we call our resilient zone um, in order to um, work from a place where we feel that we're in control. And we'll learn a little bit more about that. But before we do so, um, Navi and I are going to share um, some of our uh, wonderful students at Woodward's experiences with Help Now strategies. So the first individual that you'll be hearing from is Ella, and she is going to be sharing a Help Now strategy um, that, that she engages in. So I'll let you listen to her now. Hi. Hi, I'm Ella, I'm from Atlanta, and I'm feeling okay right now. My emotions are really up and down, and sometimes I do feel scared of the unknown, but that's all totally normal. Um, but sometimes though I do feel stress and I kind of, it piles up inside of me, and I feel like the whole world is, is moving so fast. Um, but one thing that really helps me is the help now strategy of pushing up against something for 10 seconds or so. And so you can do this against a wall or a sofa. Um, but if that's not available to you at the moment, you can clasp your hands together and really press and put all that pressure against your hands and then release. And so I, as I'm doing that, I feel the pressure start from my feet and move all the way through my arms and into my hands. And it, at first, it's kind of unpleasant, right? Because you're using so much energy and strength. But once you get that release and like kind of let go, you can physically kind of see it and feel it, um, kind of everything that you were feeling just be released and let go. And I feel free and kind of cool um, in my body, I guess. And so I'd also suggest for you to try different resiliency skills as some you may find harder to do or may not work for you as best. And so definitely kind of play around with that. Um, something I suggest too would be to do something fun yet relaxing to really be in the present moment. And so for me, I really like music. And so I'll find myself um, listening to the same song over and over again. But each time I'm focusing on a different instrument or tune. Um, and so I like close my eyes and I really feel everything inside my body and it kind of illuminates the music, illuminates my body. And like sometimes it like dances in my stomach. And so that really helps me appreciate everything in the moment, I guess, and, and what I have right now and what I can focus on right now and control. And so, yeah, um, please stay safe and remember that in whatever you're feeling, you're not alone. So Navi, do you have anything um, that you noticed in this um, expression of a help now strategy from Ella? Yeah, I actually, I remembered that um, all like in the many help now strategies that are offered, some worked for me at some times and that same one that worked for me didn't work later. Um, so I think that was a really good point that she brought up that like, some of these might not work um, right now and they might end up working later or the ones that do work for you in the moment right now might not work later. So it really depends on how you're feeling and where you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The other thing that I noticed Ella talking about was sort of what, it, what she was noticing on the inside and she was using some really interesting language like um, I'm feeling cold or there's like a sensation of dancing in my stomach. And this I is something that illuminating. I thought that was really cool too. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes you do feel like everything's involved. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think we're, we're going to learn a little bit more about the, that sensation language. Um, but before we do so, uh, let's take a listen to um, Kavya. 
who will share a help now strategy that she engages with during the quarantine and the reasons why and what that feels like for her. Hi everyone, my name is Kavya Iyer and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. During this time, I am feeling stressed. This feeling is caused by virtual learning, which happened as a result of the coronavirus. I am feeling stressed because virtual learning sometimes inhibits students from talking to their teachers as well as they would in a physical classroom. I want to be able to understand things as well as I would if I was in a physical classroom, and sometimes if I don't, that can cause me stress. Now, a strategy I use to help me you know, calm down is I drink a sip of water. The reason I drink a sip of water is because I can feel my stress just washing down my body as I take the sip of water, and that help me, helps me cleanse my mind, and it makes my mind clearer and able to focus. This is a very easy strategy for everyone to use. It sounds like it wouldn't work, but it really does if you imagine the stress washing down your body. I hope everyone stays safe during this time, and thank you. So, um, Vaishnavi, what did you notice during that explanation? I actually never thought about um, that, like the relation between like washing your stress down. I thought that was so cool. Um, even when Ella said about the release thing, like I, I just never like made that connection. Like when you have all that tension and you let go, mm -hmm. um, it's like releasing the stress. And then Kavya's was like, when you have all the stress, you're like literally washing it down with water. And I thought that was so cool. Do you relate to this sense of just feeling um, anxious about not being with your friends during the, this time? Definitely, especially with um, my mom being higher risk. So obviously, even if I want to stay with friends and I want to like hang out, I know what, what's best for my family is me not doing that. So sometimes after a lot of FaceTiming, Zooming, it does get almost annoying, like just seeing someone through a screen all the time. Um, so yeah, I think the help now strategies are definitely helpful when kind of when I'm anxious about, or like my anxiety kind of like piles up about like just everything that's happening or everything that I can't do right now. And what, when do you sort of, um, find yourself using help now strategies? Is it at a certain time of the day or when you actually notice that you're stressed out? What does that look like for you? Um, I remember the most recent time that I used my help now strategy was when I saw, like I was like scrolling through Instagram and I saw just a bunch of people hanging out without masks. And I was like, wait, no, that's not okay. And it like made me anxious because I was like, this is the reason like this is spreading so fast and stuff like that. And then I started freaking out. Um, about like what if I what if I go to a grocery store and like someone just hung out with a bunch of friends and then I just started thinking about everything that could be um, and I find myself like or I find myself getting really like stressed about it mm -hmm. so then I picked up my sticks and just kind of <laughs> held on to them for a little bit. That's right so help now strategies generally just take about 25 or so seconds mm -hmm. um, when you engage in them um, your body feels a sense of a shift, uh, but those sensations of well-being, those pleasant or neutral sensations are things that um, are indicators that it's working. So they don't fix everything, but we're going to learn a little bit about our nervous system and when it gets bumped out of our um, resilient zone is the terminology that we use. So let's look at, let's look at this chart to help us um, talk about that. It's almost like tricking your body into like saying you're okay. Mm -hmm. I think um, the help now strategies are like, maybe not exactly a distraction, but um, definitely like a diversion almost. Absolutely. So we actually have some choice there that our bodies might be noticing something that um, is dis distressing, stressful, um, our, our bodies are feeling unsafe, but that we can, yes, absolutely engage in a way to trick ourselves. But that word um, tricking, I think if we use the empowering language, it's like I have agency, I can choose what mm -hmm. it is that I want to do. And I don't want to create more stress in my body. I want to alleviate stress. So that's one of the really wonderful things about these is that it's actually stepping into our strengths. 
and stepping into our choice making and into our sort of empowered state, knowing that there is something that we can control. Um, so what is this resilient zone that we're looking at? Um, what do you remember about it? Or what is your takeaway from learning about this? So for me, the resilient zone was um, the zone in which if I was in that zone, I was the most productive that I could be. Uh, because when you're in the high or low or either side of the resilient zone, um, you tend to be powered by emotions or driven or your emotions are driving you rather than uh, you being in control of them. So uh, I think for anybody, if their emotions are what's controlling them at the moment, they aren't thinking um, as straightly, their judgment's a little bit clouded mm -hmm. and um, they aren't as productive as they could be. So um, you're saying that you can have emotions inside of the resilient zone, but the, just balance the, out. Right. The component is that either you're in control or you're not in control. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at another slide that might illuminate this. Um, so you described a really wonderful uh, sort of very clear example, um, which was that you um, that you were reminded right um of your your nervous system was reminded of something that was stressful by seeing those images on instagram right mm -hmm. um and typically instead of using trigger or trigger we often use um, the term reminded because our bodies are actually quite clear um, they have a great memory for things that um feel like they put us in danger right um so this kind of act um this nervous system that we have is a perfectly designed system. It's something that was designed to get us out of danger, right? So there's nothing wrong with us when we are bumped into a place where our bodies are very stressed or exhibiting signs of um, irritability, feeling on edge, anxious, um, heightened emotions that we are not, where we're not really thinking all that well, because at, at some point, even in the evolutionary um, understanding, we needed to get away, right? Maybe there was some huge threat and still um, there, there are threats, but, but one of the problems that we have is that we actually create threats when there aren't any threats. Like our fight or flight kind of kicks in sometimes. Precisely. So mm -hmm. what are some examples? I mean, here is a really great um, sort of graph. It shows um, a stressful event coming in and um, bumping us from our sort of zone of resilience into the high zone or down into the low zone. Um, and then there's one example here of a plateau, right, where there's actually a straight line. Um, so when we're thinking about being bumped out of our resilience zone, we know that that's really normal, but when is that problematic? Um, I think anything that happens for too long, like um, ever since we were little, we were taught that anything in small doses is beneficial, but when that small dose becomes larger and larger, it ends up hurting you than helping you. So let's, let's look at some of these. This is such wisdom that you're sharing here. Let's look at some of the examples of what our resilient zone um, looks like when we're stuck there. So if we're stuck there, I mean, we have some physiological responses that are happening and these are different in everyone. Um, so the, the ones that are listed here may actually be switched, right? But these are identifiers of an activated parasympathetic or sympathetic nervous system, depending on what. Um, so if we're stuck in the high zone, we might see some of these things. Um, and I know that as human beings that we all have experienced outbursts um, or even not being like worried thoughts when we're trying to go to sleep at night. Um, these might be things um, that are indicative of being stuck in the high zone. Um, are there anything, you know, is anything on that list resonating with you as something that you experience? Um, I think panic and phobias is mm -hmm. like kind of sticking out for me because if there's something that I'm definitely scared of or like really, really scared of and I like see it, um, then I, like, I can feel myself, I can feel my heart rate going up and I can like feel myself being paralyzed and just like, like there's um, inside me, like there are very obvious like 
shift in um, my, uh, like my physical shift. Absolutely. And what about in the, the low zone? Do you have any? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'm just randomly in the low zone. Like there might not even be a trigger or like a, um, something that a reminder, mm -hmm. but, um, sometimes I just find myself super lethargic for, I think no reason. And, um, those are the times where I feel in the low zone. Yeah. One of the things I remember talking about when we were all in class together was there was a question that came up, like, is it possible to be in the high zone and the low zone at the same time? Do you remember yeah, that? I do remember that. <laughs> and is that possible, do you think? Um, I think, yeah, in s certain situations it might be, or um, on the graph it might just look like a super fast, like high, low, high, low thing. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes our body is um, feeling way too many things at once. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that we also learned was that um, many of us, there's sort of an empowerment aspect to this. Um, and we call this a strength-based approach because and we recognize that um, there's agency here, choice-making here. Um, but some of us actually have a very shallow resilient zone um, where even small stressors can bump us out of the zone. And some have a deep resilient zone where we can actually tolerate many, many different stressors before being bumped out of control. Um, but another thing to, to illuminate this that we did in class um, was to create these charts. Could you talk about the charts that we created? Yeah, so um, for throughout the day, we kind of um, remembered our, where we were and how we were feeling. So when we reflected back on that said day, um, we like drew like where we thought we were. Um, and one commonality that I found uh, between me and my classmates was on the day that we had a test um, or a couple of us had tests on the same day. And right before the test, most of us were in the high zone. And right after, the, right after we all took the test, um, we went straight into the low zone. So it was like, like a pattern almost. Yeah, that pattern is so important. It's sort of similar to um, the experience that Ella was sharing of the sense of feeling alone, right? When we kind of sense that maybe other people are going through what we're going through, um, mm -hmm. then we ca can start to see others as being just like me. Um, so this sense of common and shared humanity um, is really important. I think in in the sense of um, being able to care for ourselves and care for each other, recognizing that we're not the only ones um, going through what we're going through. Um, Especially um, for the test scenario specifically, um, in the classroom, like you might not think anybody else is, or like feels as stressed as you are, but inside they might be just as, or even more stressed. Um, but it's all, it's like internal. So sometimes it doesn't show on the outside and sometimes it does. So someone might be just as stressed as you, but not seem like they are. But um, it's important because when you recognize that there are other people just as stressed as you, you feel a little bit like, okay, good. Like I'm not the only, I don't, I'm not like the only one feeling like this, like someone else is too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can move this chart. So one of the things that we're starting to talk about a lot is sensations. Um, and when we start to discern the difference between sensations that are unpleasant and sensations that are neutral or pleasant, we're actually beginning to give ourselves a tool um, that we can use. So there's this, this aspect of this work that's about body literacy. Um, where we can start to examine what's happening on the inside of our bodies. And that's the portal or the doorway to understanding what state our nervous system is in. Um, so these are not just, um, these help now strategies that we've been talking about are not just quick fixes, which they are, but as we start to build them intentionally, um, we start to learn to attend to the body and what our body is telling us. Um, and the more that we pay attention to those sensations, we can know when we're stuck in the high zone or stuck in the low zone. And by just knowing that information, we can access 
ways to get unstuck. Um, and that takes time, but knowing that we can actually create um, well-being in our bodies and choose that um, gives us quite a bit of control in a time um, where we feel often out of control. Um, I don't I, know if you want to talk about that. No, I think that's really helpful um, and important because even the people who identify themselves as followers and um, like, oh, I don't really like control, to some extent want control, especially of their own body. So um, just having like this option or not option, this like available um, or having these skills available so we know that we can control our body is really important. Absolutely. Um, so I've just thrown the definition of tracking here, which is um, really the ability to notice or pay attention to the sensations. So we've talked a lot about that. Um, but it really is the foundation for helping us to stabilize our nervous system so we're not oscillating out of control so often. Um, this is another way that we chart in our class. And I'm um, wondering, um, Navi, if you have anything to say about um, this chart, what is it showing? The one on the screen, um, kind of, it, that kind of reminds me of mine, but mine wasn't as neat as that. <laughs> but no, it was like um, where you feel, like what you notice or what you tracked in your body. And it was kind of like helpful having that visual like um, like diagram that you could draw on because everyone's was different um, to some extent. And like, I know the common thing that almost everybody had in class at least was the heart or like that heart area because um, we found like, I think the heartbeat is like the easiest thing to pay attention to in your body. And like breathing is probably the next. Um, and then comes like the feet and the head and like, you can see the little squiggles all over the feet and stuff and like just where um, one pays attention to. Mm -hmm. and this is just one other drawing is one other way to start to bring these insights into more of a focus. So using even marks um, and even the way in which we make the marks, but also how um, dark or light we make the lines or what colors we choose if we choose to do this in color. Um, we can start to begin to build that literacy even more um, so that even when we're stressed out, we have another uh, ability, way to recall what it is that um, we experienced um, so that it's at our, at, at our hands, basically, um, when we want to use it again. And sometimes um, we could be feeling the same way, but our bodies are reacting differently. I noticed oh. that, um, two different times that we did uh, this tracking um, activity with the little diagram in front of us. I remember feeling the same way before, but pay, almost paying attention to different things or just noticing different things at different times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in addition to having commonalities, there are also very much distinctions mm -hmm. between people, but also distinctions between yourself and different times that you're experiencing them as well. It's a really important point. Um, so this gives us a sense of the community resiliency model and the basic three plus the help now strategies. Um, so we, you know, we've been through some of these, but one of them, um, I'd like for one of our other students to share well, actually, it's this student who's here <laughs> to share about. I forgot that you're on this one, Navi. Okay, so um, Navi is um, going to be sharing about something called resourcing, um, which is basically bringing to mind um, something pleasant to think about. Um, again, a choice um, to think about something um, that brings sensations of well-being so that those sensations can be cultivated and deepened, um, and it can be used uh, anywhere at any time. So um, another way that you can be in control is knowing that you have this at, um, as a part of your toolbox um, at any time to be implemented. So let's listen to. Hi, my name is Vaishnavi Viru. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but my family is originally from India. One thing that I find about quarantine is that though it can be peaceful and reflective at times, it can also be a little bit stressful and lonely. Um, 
So one thing that I found to help with my loneliness or just the feeling of being um, so isolated is thinking of a time that I wasn't and that I was surrounded by people that I love in a wedding in India, actually. And I think about that memory and the warmth it brought me. And every time I think about it, it still brings me super, like a lot of joy. Um, and so thinking about um, a memory, whether it's real or it's made up, but as long as it brings like feelings of happiness, it, it does help a lot to just sit and like um, remember those times because sometimes you do need to be pulled out of reality just for a little bit. <laughs> what comes up for you, Navi, when you're seeing yourself? Um... Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I still use that resource a lot. Um, and I also find myself switching resources sometimes. Um, depends on what I need in the moment. Um, normally when I miss my family and I miss people, uh, that is the first resource that comes to mind, the, the wedding. And sometimes when I feel like um, I need to escape from reality, I imagine myself in a little cottage in the forest um, with like the really cute little like, like flowers and like plants everywhere. And just like, I can picture it in my mind, just how beautiful it is. Um, with the little like pies and like pastries in the house and like in the little cottage and just like, just an escape from reality really. So what I'm noticing when you're talking about this and not everybody can see you talking, but what I can, I can see is that you have this giant smile <laughs> on your face and you like look like you're on the edge of giggling, you know, like you barely can contain your smile. So I'm wondering, what are you noticing on the inside as you're describing the cottage. Um, can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, I definitely felt warmth. Like, um, like my body just felt warmer um, thinking about it, just because it's kind of like a happy place almost, like put, putting yourself in your happy place. Mm -hmm. um, so where, where do you feel that warmth in your body? In my heart, really. Um, and I could feel my heart rate going up when I talked about it, just because I was so excited. Um, but at the same time, I could feel it going down afterwards, just like visual, when I said visualize, and then I actually started visualizing it. And then I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Wow. And my heart rate went up. Powerful, and then, yeah. right? mm -hmm. So one of, one of the things that we've talked about um, is, you know, being separated from people during um, these times who we gain a lot of strength from. But one of the, one of the aspects of resourcing that's so wonderful is that even bringing to mind a person or a place um, that brings you these sensations, um, pleasant sensations, um, are actually telling your body that you're with them in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so the physiological response that you're describing is just from thinking about this image and thinking about it in detail. Right. And it's telling your it's telling your body, I'm safe, I belong, and I'm with or experiencing what I'm imagining. And I think that this is especially helpful when we feel a sense of loneliness or isolation, um, is to think about times when our people whom we, we want to be in contact with, right? I remember when we first learned about resourcing, um, in my head, I kind of associated it with controlled daydreaming so it was like you're leading your body through a dream almost but it's helping you and, and it's so powerful oh I love that controlled daydreaming mm -hmm. I like that um, so this is an example um, of us uh, our our school um, so it's actually bringing up a lot of emotions for me just looking at these two images um, but the image that's on the left is um, a group of elementary school students um, who are pushing up against a wall. And this is um, a help now strategy, actually pushing against a wall, leaning against a wall, lying down on the floor. Um, grounding is um, a technique of attuning to um, your body in contact with another object. Um, and sometimes it helps to actually push your body against an object and have that object push back. Um, this is something that can be done um, anywhere, you know, and one, I think Ella actually mentioned pushing her hands against each other. 
Uh, but this, these images are examples of peer-to-peer -peer teaching. So the students who are on the left are um, being guided by high school students, and the students on the right are middle school students guiding elementary school students. Um, so this is another example of um, how young people can carry these into their, into their lives and into their relationships with others. Um, I've also heard of young people teaching people who they're living with um, during these times. Like there's a lot of intergenerational living that's happening as a result of the pandemic. Um, and this is one of the great examples of something that young people are teaching their family members in order um, for us to stabilize our nervous system so that we can be with each other in different ways than we've ever been asked to be in before. Um, does one of these work for you, Navi, the grounding, pushing against the wall? Yeah, I do find, um, so when I first learned about grounding and like the pushing against the wall thing or leaning against it, um, I didn't, it didn't work for me. I was like uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but then I found that um, I've always lied on the floor. That's like been something that I've been doing for years. And then I realized like, oh, that's also a form of grounding. So if the wall doesn't work, someone could try the floor. It might. Absolutely. And even pushing like a shoulder, leaning a shoulder against <laughs> a wall, you know, trying all, out all sorts of different, um, different orientations. I know that for me, trees are very powerful. Mm -hmm. They're very strong. Um, you know, a brick wall also will push back, but a tree will push back as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I find leaning up against a tree or even like a cold surface. Mm, um, playing I mean. with warmth and, and coolness. I know that I remember you um, and others noticing hands on a surface like a mm -hmm. desk. There was um, this one like plate um, decorative piece that you had in your room, mm -hmm. but it was metal. So it was pretty much always cold. But every time I picked it up and like just put my hands on it, I instantly like feel my body cooling down and just like my heart rate going down, my breathing slowing. And it was, it was really nice. I, you also put it on your face, didn't you? Oh, it felt so good. Where did you put it? I can't remember. On my cheek, right on my cheek. Oh, yeah. I, it kind of like, it reminded me of um, when people put like cold water bottles against their cheek or like hot mugs against their cheek because like no one does it for a random reason. It, everyone does it because it makes them feel better inside. That's right. So again, the point of these strategies is for us to be able to stay in our resilient zone mm -hmm. and widen our resilient zone and get back into our resilient zone when we're bumped out. Um, so we've, we've talked about um, many of the strategies, uh, but there's much, much more. In fact, in C Learning, and I'm going to forward to this ending slide, um, we have seven chapters of content. Um, so we've gone over very, very briefly just a portion of what we experience within the full curriculum. So if anyone is interested in looking up um, more about these strategies or even printing out the Help Now strategies as stations to be put around the house, that's also something that could happen. Um, we even, in the pandemic, I don't have a printer. So I've hand-drawn um, Help Now strategies with my daughter and we she's 10 years old and we put them around different parts of the house so that we can engage in these strategies. When one of us gets a little bit uh, not so in our resilience zone, sometimes we have comforting or gentle reminders of engaging in help now strategies, or we're just modeling this around our house for others. So that can actually be found on the clearning.emory.edu website. If you would like to reach out to me, um, please feel free to do so um, at my email address listed there. And know that um, when you're engaging in these skills, you're actually engaging in community with an international group of individuals um, who are also learning these skills of how to constructively be with ourselves, support ourselves, and be with one another. Um, and I think this is also very empowering, know that, knowing that we're a growing and expanding community of people who are able to offer um, such benefit uh, to others. 
Um, so in order to say goodbye, I thought we could stop sharing. And um, you can see us waving and sending our love. Um, is there any uh, final word or uh, any thoughts that you would like to share with this group of individuals? Abby? Yeah, um, sometimes the first time you try something, it might not work out. Um, I found that in class a lot is like the first help now strategy that I did was the wall and I was like, wait, this didn't work. What if all the other ones don't work too? But it's really just playing with what feels right. And it might not be a set strategy that's like listed, but um, sometimes people have their own, like my version on the sticks and um, just like kind of play around with it and like remember that it's, it's your body. So whatever feels comfortable for you. That's wonderful to hear. Absolutely. We've given you some overviews, but um, the wisdom of your, you in relationship with your own body is um, the true, uh, not only uh, test um, of, of where you are, uh, but listening and cultivating these skills is relying heavily on your ability to attune to yourself. Um, thank you so much. Um, Navi for being here. Um, Thank you it's, for having me. It's such a gift to have you um, collaborate and co-facilitate with me. Thank you to Ella and Kavya um, for also sharing their insights um, to everyone. And thank you, Act Together, for allowing us to share these resiliency skills um, with a wider and wider audience. Uh, please stay safe. Please take care of yourself and each other. Um, we look forward to connecting in the future. Thank you. Bye. Bye.